when the Bureau of Prisons established the federal penitentiary on January 1, 1934. They took measures to strengthen the security of the prison cells to make Alcatraz escape-proof and also to improve living conditions for their own staff. Up-to-date technologies for enhancing security and comfort were added to the buildings. Guard towers were built outside at four strategic locations. Cells were rebuilt and fitted with tool-proof steel cell fronts and locking devices operated from control boxes. And windows were made covered with iron grills. Electromagnetic metal detectors were placed at the entrances of the dining hall and workshops, with remote-controlled tear gas canisters at appropriate locations. Remote-controlled gun galleries with machine-gun armed guards were installed to patrol along the corridors. Improvements were made to the toilet and electricity facilities. Old tunnels were sealed up with concrete to avoid hiding and escape by prisoners and substantial changes and improvements were made to the housing facilities of guards, wardens and captain to live with their families, with quality relative to rank. Warden Johnston, U.S. Attorney General Homer Cummings, and Sanford Bates, first director of the Bureau of Prisons, collaborated very closely to create a legendary prison, suited to the times which resulted in the Alcatraz Island Federal Penitentiary being nicknamed Uncle Sam S. Devil S. Island. Despite Alcatraz being designed to house the worst of the worst of criminals who caused problems at other prisons, under the guidelines and regulations set by the strict prison administrators, courts could not direct a prisoner to be directly sent to Alcatraz. However notorious they were for misbehavior and attempted escape from other prisons. Prisoners entering Alcatraz would undergo vigorous research and assessments prior to their arrival. Security in the prison was very tight, with constant checking of bars, doors, locks, electrical fixtures, and other physical security. Prisoners were normally counted 13 times daily and the ratio of prisoners to guards was the lowest of any American prison of the time. The front door was made of solid steel, virtually impossible for any prisoners to escape through. The island had many guard towers, most of which have since been demolished, which were heavily guarded at various points in the day at times when security may have been breached. For instance, there were guard towers on each of the industry buildings to ensure that inmates didn't t attempt to escape during the workday shifts. The recreation yard and other parts of the prison had a 25-foot fence around it topped with barbed wire. Should any inmates attempt to escape during exercise, one former employee of the jail likened his prison job to being a zookeeper or his old farm job due to the fact that prisoners were treated like animals, sending them out to plow the fields when some of them worked during the day, and then counting them up and feeding them and so on. He referred to those four years of his life working in the prison as a total waste of his life. The corridors were regularly patrolled by the guards, with passing gates along them. The most heavily trafficked corridor was Broadway, between B and C block. Due to its being the central corridor of the prison and passed not only by guards but other prison workers. At the end of each 20-minute meal in the dining hall, the forks, spoons and knives were laid out on the table and carefully counted to ensure that nothing had been taken as a potential weapon. In the earlier years as a prison, Prisoners were forbidden from talking while eating, but this was later relaxed, provided that the prisoners communicated quietly. The gun gallery was situated in the recreation yard and mounted on one of the dining hall's exterior walls. 
There was a metal detector outside of the dining hall for security purposes. The dining hall had tear gas canisters attached to the rafters of the ceiling which could be activated by remote control. Should prisoners riot or attempt to escape, the first warden, James A. Johnston, always entered the dining hall alone and unarmed, due to heavy guarding around him. Several riots did break out in the dining hall during Alcatraz's history. Those prisoners who were not involved in the fighting hid under the dining hall tables to escape possible gunfire.